Hi there, I'm CBS News Science and Technology Correspondent Daniel Seberg, and I'm going to be talking to a fellow in just a second who's quite a cyber sleuth. But first, the backstory. On August 15th, editor from Wired magazine Evan Ratliff basically went missing. He challenged people to try and find him in this digital age. He peppered the Wired website with some clues, letting people know where he might be. And he basically was letting people know that he was going to try and hide. He could sort of go to certain places. He only had a limited amount of money. And the idea was to sort of set people up in this chase uh, to try and track him down, see where he was, but also to illustrate how anybody could be a cyber sleuth and to see if he could actually go missing in what's called a pseudo-side. So not a homicide, but a pseudo-side. Um, he had been on the lam, in a sense, for about uh, a few weeks. A team of folks managed to track him down, and I'm going to talk to uh, Jeff Reefman right now. He's uh, the mastermind behind this uh, chase. So, Jeff, first of all, how did you uh, find out about this uh, challenge? Have you been following Evan's uh, online footprints from the beginning? Uh, I'm a Wired subscriber and read his article. Um, I didn't get interested in it for about another week. We would hear clues that he was, you know, first of all, he doesn't like... He's a gluten-free, as I understand. He likes soccer. Uh, he was setting up some of these travel plans, but no one was sure exactly where he was going. How did you know what was real and what wasn't real? Um, well, that was actually the hardest part of the, the first part of the contest, is that there was more disinformation than there was verifiable information about his whereabouts. Okay, now there was $5,000 up for grabs here. Evan was posting these uh, clues, in a sense, every so often. He had an editor working with him at Wired to post this, who claimed that he didn't know where he was. He changed his appearance. He, I think at one point actually ran into Amanda Congdon uh, with her blog site, and there was some video of him posted. Yeah, that was a big breaking point, because soon after I went and looked through the different people in our Facebook community and saw a picture that resembled the person in that video. And I think without that video, I, I wouldn't have recognized Evan's fake Facebook account. And so he was watching others watch him, in a sense? Yeah, he had promised to um, do the kinds of things that people who vanish often do, the things that give themselves away, such as um, really closely following the pursuit for themselves. And that's, that's what Evan did, and that was one of the things that led to how we caught him. All right, well, let's get to the climax here. Uh, what did you do to try and set up this sting operation to actually capture Evan Ratliff, and, and we should point out to people that you needed to, someone needed to go up to him and say the code word, which was fluke, and then he would give you or someone else a particular password. Uh, I happened to discover that Evan was actually publishing his travel journal to a secret Twitter account that no one else knew about. In this Twitter feed showed me that Evan had shaved his head. So now I knew um, what Evan's new disguise was. And we picked up an IP address uh, first in Denver at the airport, and then a couple of days later in New Orleans. And that's when we had um, most of the big breaks. And then checking out his Twitter account one more time, I happened to notice that he had added uh, a pizza business, Naked Pizza, in New Orleans. And because Evan is uh, gluten intolerant and had promised to go for gluten-free pizza wherever he traveled, um, I was pretty sure that he would be heading there within 24 to 48 hours. So I contacted the business, and, and he got his whole company and team uh, out tracking Evan, not just at the pizza place, but around the city. And um, they ultimately caught him at a book reading that some of the anonymous uh, tracker community had uh, discovered. And uh, Jeff was able to get him there. And then they took him for a very expensive gluten pizza, <laughs> a gluten free pizza. Now, have you talked to Evan since this all happened or communicated? Yeah, we, we talked briefly. And it was, it was, he was very gracious. And uh, he, he expressed an interest in getting back to see his girlfriend, which I thought was very sweet. Jeff, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right, I'm Daniel Seberg for CBS News, and that was Jeff Reifman, the uh, guy who managed to track down Evan Ratliff.